Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna take a tour of perhaps the best overlander I've ever seen. The owner, Mike, modified a military truck into his own off-road home on wheels and has been traveling around the globe ever since. The inside is not what you'd expect. It's surprisingly spacious, modern, and carefully decorated. I think you're really gonna like this one. And if you'd like to know every time I publish a new video, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm with Drive the Globe, and this is my tiny home on wheels. This is actually my third big overlanding rig. Went on a 13 month trip throughout Africa and I discovered an old Land Rover and that's how I got into sort of the expedition kind of thing. I bought this truck two years ago and then I built it last spring. So I've been out for about a year. My background isn't really in building trucks. Honestly, not really in any of the things I do. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I've been out and about enough over the years to see other people's builds. So I take cues from a lot of different places. I built it in friends' backyards and in campgrounds. So these trucks come out of the military at auction. They're fairly inexpensive. This truck I picked up for 18,000 bucks. I built the entire thing myself. I moved into it in about two months and it took four months total to finish the build. I wanted the inside to feel like home since I'm gonna be on the road living in it full time. I would say the total cost of this build is just about $90,000 to $100,000. So I wanted to keep it under that $100,000 mark. One of the things that I do while being nomadic on the road is that I've been an instructor for Overland Expo for nine years. I enjoy teaching other people about places that I've gone, off-road recovery techniques, border crossings, visa issues, and things like that. What I love about this whole sort of being on the road thing, it's a merging of overlanding with van life and RVers, and it's just people with the same goals in mind to just get out there and explore. Some of the advantages of going with a military vehicle is that they were well maintained, they're built extremely rugged, and when I picked it up two years ago, it had only 5,000 miles on it. It's a 1994 Storton Stevenson former army truck. I did very little changes to the actual military vehicle. Anything that you modify tends to create further problems in the future, so what I did do is we have a cage added for the cab to mount mostly my cycling gear on the roof. I changed out all of the military lighting to LED, so every light was replaced on the exterior of the truck. Coming back this way a little bit, I did put underbody boxes underneath the vehicle for storage for camping. You can see the tires are big. These are 48 inch tires. And you can see one of the features that the military trucks come with is a central tire inflation system. So it's push button controlled from the cab. And basically when you go off road, you hit the button for sand, for mud, and then it automatically inflates and deflates as you drive. So that's a nice feature that happens to come with these trucks. And you can see up here, this is where the spare tire is located. People ask, it's 400 pounds per tire, and I'm certainly not gonna lift it up and down. But you can see right in here, this is all hydraulically controlled, so it has a boom that lowers the tire and raises the tire. These pods right here are max uh, air vent fans for the bathroom and for the shower and for my hot water, instant hot water heater inside. And then you can see I built it kind of like an RV, so I have water fill here. And then right here I've got 30 amp shore power hookup. These are the fills for the transmission, uh, for engine oil and all that. And then the dipsticks are even allocated. And this is kind of interesting because look at this dipstick. <laughs> because it's got air brakes and these are the air tanks, I added a external thing so I can run uh, air tools. 
and an air jack if I need to change my tires. And then under here is a gray water tank. The gray tank hooks up here. I've got 85 gallons of fresh water. I have a 25 gallon gray water tank and I have a cassette toilet inside that's about seven and a half gallons. One of the features about this particular M1079 from the military is that this box is already on the truck. I didn't have to put it on, I didn't have to build it. It actually comes with windows that have screens that pop out. And then I added the five feet uh, bump out here on the rear of the truck uh, for my bedroom section. And then I have my bike racks here. These are one-up bike mounts. And I usually carry anywhere from two to four bicycles. Being a big cyclist, I decided I wanted a nice bike mount here so I could work on it. And that pops in here so I can mount a bike on the back here and do some maintenance. And then I've got my 2021 KTM uh, 390 Adventure Bike. I custom built the frame that it is sitting on and it has a ramp and then to load it up by myself because I wanted to make sure I could do all this by myself. Getting it down, I can you know come down the ramp. Getting it back up, I have a little portable winch I mount on the front here with a uh, remote and I just kind of walk the bike right up onto the ramp. Or if I don't want to have to move this big rig around, it's convenient to have a motorcycle. Back here, I've got another box. I mostly keep my motorcycle and kayaking gear in there. The main reason for the underbody boxes is so I don't have to put anything inside the habitat. So when I roll into camp, my inside house, if you will, is completely ready to go. There's nothing laying on the floor. I don't have to move like kayak paddles or anything like that. Everything is stored externally on the truck. I replaced the entrance with just a regular old RV door that I got on eBay somewhere. And I built these steps. These are uh, torque lift steps that you can buy online. And what's nice about it is it just slides in when I'm on the road. So it also doesn't need storage. It's underneath the truck. So we're on the roof here. I've got 12 Renogy 100 watt solar panels. I made a kayak mount so it's not touching the panels. And it probably when I have it mounted, it cuts down maybe 15% of the solar power, but not a big deal. I got a WeBoost uh, for cellular boosting, my FM uh, antenna, Sirius XM satellite radio on board in the cab and in the habitat. All right, now that we've checked out outside, let's go inside my home. So inside my home here, my four main goals for this build were to have a kitchen, a place to work, a bed that I didn't need to fold out, and a full-size shower like you have in your home. We're gonna start here in the kitchen. This is what I did not have in my last build. I have a burner top here, uh, kind of an oven that, believe it or not, you can actually bake in. It works pretty good, especially frozen pizza. The cabinets, as you're looking at this, is all Ikea. And a couple people gave me some, you know, negative feedback, they're not gonna hold up, and I can tell you over the past year, I've been bouncing around, the cabinets are holding up just fine. I magnetize these, so that the magnets are super strong, um, but on top of that, I put, you know, bungee cords here just as extra security, so stuff's not smacking into it when I'm bouncing around off-road. And then you can see, like, this is all my plates and silverware. This is a double sink, ceramic sink. I love it because doing dishes is so much easier when you have actually some space to put water and things in. This is the Akuva the UV light water filtration system. You can see when you turn it on, it turns blue under there. This, I have a Dometic uh, two-zone fridge freezer that slides out from under there. I had to kind of custom fabricate this whole thing so it could fit underneath the plumbing. But you can see like that's the freezer and uh, fridge, so a lot of space for food. No drinks in here because I have a whole nother refrigerator inside the cab. These are Velcroed. I actually Velcroed this and Velcroed that. This is the, the espresso machine is screwed down. Toaster doesn't move. So there's very few things. There's a couple things like the pods and whatever I just stick inside the sink when I move. But really I can set the whole inside up here in three minutes after rolling into camp. Oh yeah. Normally, 
you would install a what they call a split unit air conditioning in these. They run for about 4,000 bucks if you find a DC unit. This is a regular window air conditioner for a house that you can get at Lowe's. So it's $175. I could break this thing an awful lot and replace it and still spend less money than a split unit. It works great. It's only 135 square feet inside here and I can run it for about eight hours on my battery life and it's running through an inverter so you, you figure your loss is probably 25-30%. Below that is my charge controller. Brings in all the energy from the solar panels. Around the corner here I've got uh, onboard uh, sound system. So these are some of the upgrades that I made uh, that I didn't have in my last build. And the ceiling which is faux tin vinyl, I used in prior builds, so I kind of knew what I wanted to do. In fact, everything in here is really plastic-based or non-wood. It's because I change environments a lot. I didn't want a bunch of uh, shrinking and contracting and warping and whatnot. So I tried to use every square inch, and a lot of people put dinettes in their setups, and I kind of spend 98% of my time outside, so I didn't really want to do that which gave me ability to have like a, I call it my kitchen table, it folds up. I rarely, rarely use this unless there's a couple of us sitting here and it's uh, inclement weather or something outside. You can see, uh, I don't have a whole lot of places to sit, but everything has storage um, inside. So I got these little stools underneath and then all my little drawers uh, in here, you know, pull out and you got all sorts of stuff that I can store in there. So kind of using every little space. I work a lot making videos and doing things, so I wanted a real computer. So this folds down here, and I have an iMac that's mounted in here. I call this current one three. This is the third big orange rig. So this is my Mercedes Unimog. This is the trailer that I built and lived in for a year. And then this is my old Land Rover. You can kind of, if you spin around on the other side here, I got pictures up on the, on the wall of different travels, but this is me in the Sahara Desert with the old 1965 Land Rover. So this is my little bathroom. Uh, unlike some other builds, I have a separate bathroom and separate shower. They're not in the same room. So in here I have my cassette toilet and I have my you know vanity and sink. And you got the main mirror, and of course, I shaved my head, so I got these mirrors on either side here so I can see either side of my head in the mirrors up there. Coming down this section is heading towards my bedroom where I have a wardrobe on one side and a full-size house shower with a glass door and sort of a rain head shower. I just, that was one of my big priorities was to have a nice shower on board. I use about a gallon, a gallon and a half per minute water flow out of this. And with an 85 gallon freshwater tank, I've got plenty of water on board. This comes across here and hooks into here. And then I have hanging here for clothes drying or whatever. So this wardrobe on this side, it actually is almost the full height of the truck. I had to measure this three times. And so I built it in place. And then inside here is, uh, you know, hanging uh, drawers and then uh, shoe storage underneath. And then back here, this is the five foot bump out section that I built. And inside here is my bed, which I was able to get in a like real, you know, home mattress. So it was comfortable. I installed the two Arctic turn windows on the sides and a max air vent fan overhead. All right, now we are in the cab of the truck, which is for me, one of the most panoramic views you get with a cab forward design. Sitting here, I'm about five feet off the ground. It is super spacious. When I got this truck, it was just a barren, loud metal space, not one soft surface in it. So upgrades that I've made, I did put cab air conditioning unit in off of a later model uh, vehicle. This pod here, I added from a different truck as well. And this has all my overhead lighting co uh, controls. I use the Garmin Overlander for my GPS right here. Uh, Garmin InReach is over here for tracking and for SOS recovery. And then I got an iPad uh, in between the seats that I mostly use when I pull to the side of the road and I wanna look up something. There used to be a third seat in it for the military where the guy would sit back here and pop up through the gun turret <laughs> to shoot. Uh, I have a second Dometic refrigerator here. This is where I keep all my uh, Gatorade and water and beer and whatnot. 
in that fridge. And then I have storage behind the seats for, you know, camera gear, my one wheel and stuff like that. The biggest uh, expense, honestly, on this whole truck and upgrade that I made was these Schielmann seats from Germany. Uh, they are just incredibly comfortable and, you know, dual armrests, they're heated, they're amazing. I did all the, the, the paneling, this uh, fabric on the doors, and I insulated, super insulated underneath the seats, both for heat and for sound. So I can drive around, along the road, you know, comfortably uh, listening to the radio in a truck that before it was like, oh, you, know, you just need to wear a headset uh, so you wouldn't go deaf. You know, it's got push button start. <laughs> To me, being out on the road, the best thing about it is that every morning I get up in my own bed with my own stuff. I'm always at home. It just happens to be I look out the window and I get a different view every morning. If I could say one thing to anybody, just do it. Get out and do it. You can prepare forever and get ready to get ready. Just get out there. Thanks for watching this week's video. If you'd like to see more overlanding rigs and modified military trucks turned tiny homes, I have a playlist for you in the description. And I will see you soon with another tiny or creative home tour.